How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six coming. Welcome back to Head as Code. We are trying to escape a collapsing station. Everything has gone to shit in the last half hour. No doubt about it. There's been earthquakes. The tunnels are collapsing. Um, A's been shooting everybody. Four people are dead because A shot them in the face. Tunnels are collapsing. We're trying to escape with a girl that's blind and deaf on electrified tracks. It's, all, it's, it's a bad time. <laughs> This was uh, repeated for the library, the pantry, and the lounge. Deciding not to stop at the lounge, I kept going, unwilling to see dead bodies again. Plus, that's the only place you can go where he could also be without someone getting executed because we're not allowed to all be in one station at the same time except the lounge. While I was walking, I came up, an idea came to me. The damage done to these stations was far too big to be just the work of an earthquake. Besides, earthquakes didn't really happen here. did sound like a bomb to... Not like this. As I crossed each station, there were more earthquakes happening. See, here in New Zealand we get earthquakes all the time. Like, all the time. Because we're in the ring of fire, right? There's, earth there's volcanoes everywhere. Earthquakes constantly. You get used to them. <laughs> but they don't sound like bombs going off. The ground shook and I stopped to keep myself steady. Each of them one by one. Always while I was in the darkness. As if it was following me. These aren't earthquakes. They're explosions. The entire place is going under. I gritted my teeth while I made my way to the security room. Either this was Smiley's plan, or someone else was destroying this place. I could only think of Agnos. This reminded me of the events that had transpired not long ago on the subway in New York. They said that every station had exploded. Was it the same here? According to what the old man told me, he was the one who cleaned house. That was one way of doing it. He was the architect of this of that destruction, huh? So he already knows how to blow up a subway station. And now, I had proof of it firsthand. When I arrived at the security station, he was there. I dropped D and drew out my gun. Step away from the edge of the station. That's very nice artwork, I really like that. I ordered him to move despite the fact that he had the high ground. You have a gun. I was armed and he was not. Well, well, if it isn't my assistant, what help have... Hey, what help you have been. Thankfully, I'm in a good mood. You're the only one. Did you forget you killed my friends? Now, now, calm down. I see you still have the gun. You can kill me now if you want, but if you do, this entire place will collapse right over your head. That's what I thought. You're the one who screwed us over. Ah, that wasn't my intention. All I wanted to do was destroy this place for the good of mankind. Surely you must agree that terrible things happen here. Honestly, I don't give a fuck. I just want to leave this place, okay? And I'll personally let you out, and even drive you to your home in a limousine, if I had one. So long as you open that ridiculous door. I don't know how to. Lies and falsehoods. You're the one who managed to lure me into a false sense of security. I was tricked by you, Smiley, but no more. I clenched my teeth harder. I was getting angrier by the second, but there was little I could do. With the gun trained on him, I could keep him from coming closer, but at this distance, any shot taken would probably be a miss. Listen, I don't know how to open that stupid door. I don't care. Do whatever you want. I'll even give you the damn remote. I'm not smiling. I don't know who the fuck it is. It can't be any of us three at this point, so stop accusing me. I reached into the bag of my hand and snagged up the remote while keeping the gun at him. I flung the remote over the edge of the station, sliding it over the smooth ground. It was the only sound interrupting my monologue. Killed my friends. Jasmine and Marco, the both of them were here. If I was Smiley, why the fuck would I put them here? Why would I be here too? You know, I kind of like Jasmine. No, fuck this, I loved her, you asshole. I loved that fucking girl and you killed her without a single care. You killed her and you killed Marco and you robbed me of my friends. Here, if you take another step, I'll shoot. I should gun you right, gun you down right now for what you did. I saw him take a step forward, forward but I quickly remedied that by adjusting my aim. He seemed to be thinking about what I was saying and weighing if it was worth it. My aim's better when I got nothing to lose. If this is a result of what your organization does, it can go to hell. I swear to God, I'll send you there myself if you don't give me the way out right now. I was running on adrenaline by this point. I wasn't in control of myself anymore. All I felt was anger, sadness, hatred, and other powerful emotions I couldn't even name. I sensed dread, danger, but also euphoria. I was tired. I didn't want this madness anymore. I wanted out of here. I see. Believe me, I understand your plight. I glared at him as he made fun of my predicament. 
He held his hands up defensively. Oh no, I'm being most sincere. I truly understand your pain, but that is a story for another time. How about never? Also fair? You want to leave, don't you? I'll give you specific instructions that'll let you do so. It is a little complicated, but I already tested it and the results speak for themselves. I didn't trust that bastard. I understand you don't trust me, but I have deduced you are not my enemy. I didn't trust that bastard for a single second, but I didn't have a choice. This was the final step. Fine. Agnos reached into his bag and took out a collar. I still have this one. It is the collar of the twin known as H. So she was dead. Killed by him, no doubt. If you go to one of the scanner gates leading out of this place, you should be able to throw the collars I left in the, gr in the lounge through them. They won't activate. That is because the scanners are unresponsive. I don't know why, but the collars didn't activate when I sent the other pair through. Are you sure it's not just because they were already dead? No, of course not. I went through just fine too. I assume they shut down when I dismantled the power source. I can even tell you what's beyond the scanners if you don't believe me. What is it? It's an elevator. Surely it must be one of the elevators which are normally used by people with disabilities in their legs, or for larger cargo. I didn't take it, of course, because I wasn't done here. Okay, so if I throw those collars, it'll all be fine. That's just so that you can see for yourself. I doubt it makes a difference if you throw the collars through the scanners now or not. Well, you better get going. I won't detonate anything further until you make your way back. I'd say we make him walk through it first. I hesitated. I didn't have a choice, so I acknowledged his advice. Okay, sure. Pray we never meet again. Yes, pray we never meet again. I'll be leaving this place once every station has been destroyed anyway. That is true justice, my boy. The truest justice. The one who stays alive decides it. By the time he was done talking about delusions of grandeur, I was already back on the track. I had quite a ways to go through the tunnel before I arrived there. I cast one gla last glance back toward the station and saw Agnos leave through one of the dark hallways to the sides. That bastard was walking station to station too. If he was doing it, perhaps they were closer than I imagined. When I walked, I didn't seem... It didn't seem that far either, giving credence to his idea. I focused back on the trek. Just like before, while I walked, there was another earthquake. That bastard. Did he lie to us to continue detonating the bombs in peace? Assuming he was doing it in order, he started with the power generator and the next one had been the lounge. That motherfucker. I still made my way there because I didn't trust what he said. Back at the lounge, I helped a hopelessly confused E climb up onto the station platform. I followed with a mighty leap afterwards. So what's going on? I can't see where I'm going. Are we leaving this place? I wasn't able to let her know I was going up, so I reassured her with a few taps on her shoulder, after which I looked inside the lobby. No debris. As the way was clear, I went up the stairs to confront the grim side of here again. I pondered on Agnos for a moment. Perhaps he was smiling. How many know about the stations? How could he have gained a gun otherwise too? Maybe he was just toying with me. Finally up the stairs, I saw it all again. Marco, Jasmine, G and Ray were all on the ground, dead. With Agonos admitting he had H's collar, all five were definitely dead. I clenched my teeth and my fists in pure anger, which disappeared immediately afterwards. I didn't want to leave their bodies here, but I could hardly carry them out. Checking their bodies, I saw Marco and Ray's collars were gone. What Agnos said wasn't a lie. You really used them, huh? So the way out is open now. Yes. Am I okay with this? Am I okay with letting your killer go rampant, Jasmine? Marco, what do you think? Got another dumb joke? You'd probably say killer, but I hardly know her. Or something to that effect. My strength left me and I fell to my knees. I had no more will to stand up for several moments. I fell into an uncontrollable, sobbing mess. This was real and I needed to get it out of my system. I didn't have a lot of time to mourn and grieve. Do it when you get out, man. One thing was for sure. As soon as I'd be out of here, I'd go to the police and notify them about this dangerous man. That was my plan, but it wouldn't bring them back. There was no second chance. I weakly punched the ground before sniff sniffling up my sorrows. I stood back up and squatted to pluck the collars from Jasmine and G's bodies. Once they were dead, of course they were dead so the collars wouldn't kill them again. Strangely, they didn't detect me using force, so they didn't activate either. Perhaps the collars knew their wearers were dead. 
But Simon, collars aren't people. People wear collars. Oh, Jasmine. Before I fell on my sorrows again, I got a grip and stood back up. I sat him on my bag and left the area, never to return. Goodbye, Jasmine. Goodbye, Marco. G, H, and Ray. None of you deserve this either, except possibly you, Ray. Because you're an asshole. But I was still alive. Not only that, but E was alive too. Assuming we'd both survive, this experience was special. It was one of a kind. Even if life had returned to normal after this. The two of us now shared an undeniable link. We're leaving? I don't know what's taking so long, but I trust you. She offered a smile as I took her hand in mine again. I trusted her too. I couldn't tell her, but she was warmth. I could be comfortable within it. With her. The two of us set off through a tunnel again. More tremors had erupted while we made our way to the security room again. There were no traces of Agnos. I called up the stairs and he wasn't there. I threw the collars out through the scanners. Nothing happened except that the door closed behind them. If something like this triggered, then clearly that was the way out. Obviously with the door closed, we couldn't take this exit anymore. I took E's hand again and we went through another walk. I didn't understand the process, but if it worked, it worked. I made my way back to the science lab. Once we arrived there, I took E up the stairs and we stood in front of the scanner gate. I still had some apprehension. What if this didn't work? What if Jasmine, Marco and the others died in vain? We're right there, aren't we? In front of the scanners. Don't worry, I'm here. We'll be fine. That's correct. We'd be fine. With ease hand in mind, I stepped through the scanners and closer to our good ending. Whatever it was that Agnos did, it worked. When we stepped through the scanners, nothing happened. He seemed a little afraid and so was I, but it was safe. We're done. We're out. I shivered in realization of what we'd actually accomplished while releasing a breath I didn't even know I'd been holding by, some, by the same occasion. I didn't care if Agnos was still blowing up the other stations. I was out of here. I was free. I was with E. But the girl pulled her hand away from mine. I took a quizzical look at her. She reached for the her headphones and her mask with both hands. I think... I think they're done. I didn't understand what she meant. Very soon it became apparent. It was her headset. She removed it after messing with the two objects a little. I could see her face. It was some kind of miracle. Perhaps the timing was even too perfect. However, I didn't care. In that moment of euphoria, I felt light. This was only making it better. She beamed a smile at me, looking around herself. I thought that she was cute. Everything was going fine, going to be fine now. I knew I shouldn't have insisted on the security and well-being of the situation, but I couldn't help myself. Death flags be damned, this was a good moment. I can see you. The light makes it somewhat difficult, admittedly. We weren't in an area with strong light, but I figured if she'd worn this thing over her head every day for the past however many months, then it might have been jarring. You've been avoiding looking at me. Are you embarrassed? There's no need for that, we're out and everything's over now. I had been avoiding it, yes. Now that their senses had been restored, I felt a little weird about looking at her, or grabbing her hand as I did before. Well, you see... Nonsense. The girl grabbed my hand instead, completely disregarding my argument, which was barely an argument to begin with. You might be wondering exactly what happened, so let me explain just a little then. Maybe you'll be more confident afterwards. Basically, my headset was on to repair my senses. Over many months, it has been working to reapply a new sequence based upon my DNA. You can think of it as 3D printing. They were remaking the interior of my ears and eyes. The technology was still experimental when I was given the option to partake in it. I had no choice because otherwise I wouldn't have regained my sight and hearing. And now we're both alive to see it. I'm so glad, Simon. Wait, how do you know my name? Oh, Agnos told me. Bastard. Come on, let's head out. Let's leave this horrible place behind us. Let it disappear. Let's go and take a breath of fresh air. She smiled at me and urged me on. I thought there was no reason to delay it, so I went for it. We stepped further down the hallway past the scanners. Just like Agnos told me, once we were further in, we found an elevator. This is the one he told me about. The one that would allow us to leave. There were many buttons. I pressed a few of them, but none of them worked. Try the one labelled with a zero. I tried, but it didn't do anything. Uh, let's try another one. I tried pushing the one with a minus two label, and it worked. The elevator started moving. I expected it to take a few moments, 
but it went on and on. The elevator moved for what felt like entire minutes. How far underground was this place? I looked at E, he was just as puzzled as I was. We're way further under the metro. Normally it's not this deep underground. After five minutes, the elevator was still going up. Finally, it ceased its movements. Despite that, I didn't think we were above ground yet. I'll go take a look. Do you want to come too? No, I'll keep the door open so it won't move no matter what. She stuck her arm through the open doorway and I nodded, stepping through. I went through the darkness for a few moments until I emerged into a strangely familiar room. This is... just a scanner room. I'm on the other side now though. The door's closed on the other side. Maybe it's best not to step through it. What does it mean? Is this... are there many levels of this place? All with a similar contraption? I went back to the elevator to share that thought with E. She looked pensive for a moment. It was so strange to see her face after spending hours with before without it being possible. This doesn't feel right. Look at the buttons. They're all numbered in descending order, except for zero which is at the bottom. It goes from minus one to minus twenty-eight. I pushed the button labeled zero but once again the elevator didn't move. Why is it not working? Maybe... I have a hypothesis as to why. First of all, I wish I could know which floor we'd been before, but it doesn't matter too much, I guess. You know how this is established far below the earth? Maybe whoever did this is using a real place as a cover. Imagine if this place was under the subway. You can't actually reach the ground floor because someone has an elevator there already. If it's the same elevator, um, tower, whatever they're calling, then it might detect something at floor zero already. That's kind of annoying because this means that until the elevator gets called to floor one or two, we can't really get out of here. You said there was something like a door, right? Yeah. There was a scanner hall right at the end of the bend in the tunnel. What was beyond it? There was a closed door. So that means maybe they built this place on several floors. An entire system of trains over 28 floors deep into the earth and we just happened to be on the maybe 18th one. Which means the door was closed because people already escaped from that floor. Maybe they're the ones already up there. No, wait. If they were, then this elevator would be up there. Let's test it anyway. She pushed the button labeled minus one. The elevator moved upwards again. Yes, that works. The other floors work, but not floor zero. We just have to wait until the elevator's gone and we'll be home free. Okay, what do we do to pass the time then? Oh, I don't know. We can share information. She had a very complicit tone. I replied in kind. What, like if I heard of any plan to assassinate the president? No, you silly boy. I mean stuff like your favorite color. Oh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mine's yellow. It's kind of a weird color, I guess. A lot of people don't like it because it reminds them of bees or something. I love yellow. Yellow's great. Bananas are yellow. <laughs> I can't really fault them. Bees don't go for you anyway. Those are wasps. Yeah, well, wasps are also yellow. Yellow and also black. Mine would be blue, I think. Or green. Green, huh? Green isn't a creative color, though. Hey, who's prejudiced now? Truth be told, I didn't really have a favorite color. I liked all of them. Saying it like that would make me sound indecisive though. Speaking of sharing information, I still don't know her name, right? This is the perfect time to ask. Now that we're out, you still haven't told me your name yet. However, there'd be no sharing of names. The sudden tremors that came from the ground made me lose my footing, and I crashed to the ground. Similar to what he did. What the fuck is going on? I rose back up from the ground, holding for dear life onto parts of the elevator. Oh no, it's Agnos. He got to the science lab and now he's blowing up the elevator. Watch out, it's happening again. We should get out of the elevator then. I trip when the next tremor occurred. It's t if it's 28 floors up, right? And he blows up the elevator and it falls. We are so super duper fucked. <laughs> I trip when the next tremor occurred and I rolled out of the elevator since the doors hadn't closed yet. I must have hurt my ankle because I couldn't rise back up again. Gah. E, are you okay? I checked with her, but my state wasn't anything great either. I realized what stopped me from standing up wasn't just my ankle, but my entire leg. More debris came down. The end result was that I couldn't get my lower body up. I reached for E to try and have her help me pull up from the ground, but she'd fallen inside the elevator and she sprained her ankle. Hold on to me. We need to go above ground. The zero button must work now. Wait, no, not this, I don't... She reached for me as the ground fell under me. It freed me, but there was nothing for me to hold on to anymore. I did a miraculous leap forward and I snatched the side of the elevator, even if my lower body dangled above empty space. Oh man, the art is so good. 
If I fall, it won't be uh, pretty. Grab my hand. She reached me and I did exactly that, but I didn't think she was strong enough to pull me in. Instead, I reached with the other hand to grasp around the open doors. The closest button was the zero button. I smashed my hand onto it with extreme effort. Yep, it's still not working. You stupid shit. I don't want to go without you anyway. Come into the elevator. Why are you stuck? Why can't you get up? Why is this happening now? Oh, it's my fault. I should have killed, killed that asshole. No, don't think it's over. You can still make it in. You have to go without me. The floor isn't too far below. I think I can make it, and then I'll find you. No, the floor is way too low. Look under you. It's a few stories tall. She was right. If I let go here, I'd die. Unfortunately, I lost most control of my legs by now. Falling materials and rubble had irredeemably broken my legs. I felt my lower half filled with nothing but pain. Most likely, my body was staining the entire broken hallway. It was most likely leaking down the side of the elevator shaft on the outside here. My insides were slowly oozing out, mixing with dust and debris. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. I pulled myself forward with a louder growl. Finally, I reached further inside. Yeah, you have to live. I slammed my hand on the only other button I could reach. I couldn't see it, but if I remembered right, the left column was the odd numbers. The bottom one was minus 27 then. No! I released everything, but the doors closed onto my neck. I was suspended against the wall by my neck, and the collar detected force being applied. Soon it beeped. Ah, fuck! I didn't mean for this, but you have to live! Don't worry about it. I'm fine. And then my head rolled into the elevator. The unfortunate result made E scream like a maniac. I couldn't blame her. Due to my mistake, the girl had my severed head next to her, and my neck hadn't even finished cooking yet. The elevator began its descent down to floor minus 27, where hopefully the elevator shaft would survive the next blast from the explosives, and hopefully this wouldn't become a coffin with my head and a pure girl within. She had to suffer this horrific vision because of me. But far from what I expected, she grabbed the sides of my head instead and lifted me up until she looked at me directly. Listen, listen well and never forget. Oh my god, here we go, I'm gonna write some shit down. Imprint it in your memories. Don't ever think about forgetting. You have to remember the fourth letter is Y. I knew it. I had no idea what that meant. I would never find out. Oh yes we will, in another timeline. I expired shortly after. Thankfully for me, when beheading, the head remained somewhat alive for a short moment. Of course I couldn't make sense of anything though. I couldn't even move anything. The pain was like the world had fallen upon me all at once, and yet soon it was over. My last thoughts were full of regrets, but he would live on. I'm coming, Marco. Jasmine, wait for me. Ending A. Head good end. <laughs> oh, great. That's a good end. Oh, so how many endings? Are these all different endings? Jesus Christ, so what's that? Four, five? So there's ten endings. And then that's going to open up the flowchart for us? The end is reached, but the story is not over. The gears of fate continuously turn, becoming the truest embodiment of an endless circle. We'll have a quick look at the flowchart and everything, and then we'll wrap it up. It's going to be a little bit of a short one, I'm sorry. Actually, we'll, what we'll do is we'll let the credits roll for this ending, and uh, we'll wrap the episode up here, and in the next one, we'll see what's opened up at the flowchart, because we're going to have to pick a whole new path. Presumably, I'm not sure how the flowchart works in this game yet, but we will figure it out. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks again, Arthur, and I'll see you in the next episode.